There's a there's some music for you. <laughs> Welcome, hell, you business geeks, to the Business Geeks Podcast, where we geek business. I'm Super Joe Pardo, and I'm joined by my two wonderful co-hosts each and every single week. This week, we're we are discussing. The future of business. It's not all bad. I, I think it's I think it's great that we're looking at trying to do some kind of positive topic rather than a topic about us being beat down during these crazy, crazy times. Uh, we also have a uh, a hot or not uh, that involves cardboard cutouts. If you watched the show uh, a couple you know a couple weeks ago, we were talking about cardboard cutouts. This is a li- little little bit different. I'm not sure that how I feel about this yet. So I'm, I'm interested to hear what my two co-hosts think of that. Uh, speaking of co-hosts, Samantha Riley of SamanthaRiley.global. How are you feeling tonight? I'm doing so Today, well, sorry, Joe. It's yes, it's morning here. I, I feel like I get the, the long straw. I feel like you guys get the short straw having to do a show at night. <laughs> but that could just be me. I'm not a night owl. So I'm happy that it's morning here in Australia. Oh yes, that is that is good. To, yeah, I mean, it, it would be weird if it was nighttime there <laughs> and nighttime here at the same time. Yeah, it kind of doesn't work, really. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, according to flat earthers, you guys don't exist down there. So. No, no. There, apparently, there's no such thing as Australia. We don't exist. The uh, Australia isn't a thing. I'm not really here. I'm just a figment of your imagination. Definitely. Weird. Yeah. Well, you're 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 a, you're a welcome figment of our imagination. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, Super Joe. You, you are so welcome. As well as Jennifer Crawford, the co-founder of Sparent.co. Jennifer, how are you feeling tonight? I am so good. It's been such a long day. Today was the first day of the Small Business Grit Summit, my first yeah. virtual Ooh. summit. Oh, my gosh. I was so nervous this morning. I was nauseous. Uh, but everything went really well. We have um, we sold over 200 tickets, and the attendance oh. of our live interactive event events were great. We had like over 60 people in our strategic networking event and everybody was super just enthusiastic. They were so into it and there for it. And we got great feedback and it was just, you know, when you work so hard on something, but you don't, you, you don't know how well it's, you know, like you've never done it before. You work really hard. You try to make it the best you can be, but until it's executed, you don't really know if your vision is going to match reality. So in this mm. case, it definitely matched reality. I, I am really happy with how how it played out. I had my co-founder of the Small Business Grit Summit, Mary Sue, who's uh, may wa- maybe watching tonight. Uh, we both had a, a little celebratory toast of champagne afterwards because we felt so positive. We only have eight more days to go. <laughs> So <laughs> um, we'll have champagne again on the on the ninth day, but um, but today was just a, a little bit of a victory lap because well, we, is, sur- we survived. That's awesome. Well, well done. Good, good job. Now, so I got to ask, I got to ask, why so many days? I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> they I, were drinking I, champagne when they decided. <laughs> this, okay. So I always try to, I always like to do things my own way and not pay attention too much to how other people are doing similar things because I think mm. it, it pollutes my creativity and, and, you know, foster self-doubt because I'm doing something different. So I try not to pay too much attention. So it wasn't until after we put it all together that I was like, oh yeah, most summits, virtual summits are like one day or maybe three days. I've never seen one that's nine days, (laughs) but it's fine. It's fine. It's great because we have, we've packed it full of value. And now we, we have, you know how this is Joe with your virtual conferences, um, you end up having a colossal amount of content and then you can repackage that in in different ways. We have a lot of options of how we can work with that content now that we have it. Um, so it's, it's not a bad thing, but yeah, it, it's a beat. We created a beast. I don't, we didn't really think about, oh, it's nine days. That's kind of long, but <laughs> I mean, I, I love, I love and appreciate the fact that you're like, I want to do it my own way and find 
and that and that i mean two two thumbs two thumbs way up it's absolutely just, I, I was talking about from an exhaustion standpoint of your, your both oh, of your sanity so yeah well that's days. the other well that's a good point that's another reason it ended up being so long is because we didn't want to monopolize somebody for the whole day so we have like the pre some pre-recorded on-demand content that comes out every day the live interactive events are only two um about two hours a day a couple of wow. exceptions but two hours a day where we actually need you there like in attendance interacting active engaged uh, but i can't expect people to be actively engaged for eight hours a day for several days at least i don't think yeah, i can I, yeah. mm, that's a big ask yeah it's a big ask that's people, cool it is yeah and these are business owners and they should be busy and people were you know some people had to come early and leave early i mean come late and leave early but and i was there apologizing i was like do not apologize because it was because they were busy running their businesses mm. and of course we respect that so oh, good i love it i love it yeah so good and how about you joe how are you doing today yeah, joe exhausted Exha can you can you see you, you can't really see let me switch let me switch my camera up here so yeah you, you seem kind of blurry to me and I, but i have bad eyesight oh, really? so i don't know no no no. you're definitely blurry okay am i am i blurry am I, very yeah. blurry i don't know what happened dirty i don't i don't know where my uh, thing is but you can see i got drywall up on all the walls it's all it's all done here, uh, which is great. It's uh, it was exhausting, um, and we ran or I, we I mean me I ran uh, a, a virtual conference this past weekend, um, where we had. Am I am I still blurry? It's no, not now. No, now it's better. No, oh, there we go. Much better. Um, no, oh, good. Uh, so yeah, I ran a virtual conference this weekend for community building for podcasting and uh, went really, really well. Had uh, it was only I say only, but it was it was a little over six hours this this time. Around. Oh my gosh, that's so. Um, I don't that's know how you, I don't know how you do it. I would much rather do like a couple hours a day. So do you, oh. you want to know a secret? <laughs> If you want to know a secret, okay, I, I, was, I was able to get things done around the garage while I was listening this time around. So I was able to, I was like, I put the speakers up in the, in the ceiling out in front of me and like ran the wire. So like in between some of the talks, I was up in the attic, like fishing wire through across from one end to the other. Uh, and then had to like quick cause the steps come down like right here. So you would see the steps. So when it got came time, it was like, Oh, they're starting to wrap up. Like, boop, got to put the steps up and get downstairs and wipe all the sweat off my head. Cause of course it was an 80 degree day. Uh, it couldn't have been like a, a 60 degree day. So it was, it was fun. It was a great time. Um, and we're doing the next one, May 30th. Uh, you are a glow. Wow, you're on fire. How do you Thank do you. it? I appreciate it. I, yeah, I, I, do, I, do, I do what I can for my peoples. What can I say? Love it. Love it. What's up, What's up Tim? How are you doing? What's this um, avatar thing? Oh, yeah, I so don't know what this is. There's avatars all over my Facebook. I have no idea how to do it. Uh, I only found how, how to do it because um, when Charles... <laughs> Uh, posted it somewhere and I was like, oh, you just click here. But it, had she had not done that, I don't think I would have known how to do it. Um, oh, but I haven't I made one myself. Ava took the phone and she's like, oh, I'm going to find a haircut. I'm going to find a haircut uh, that I, for, my, for herself <laughs> that she wants. I haven't made mine either. I'm too oh. busy for an avatar. <laughs> At least this week I am. Maybe, next, maybe a couple weeks from now I'll make mine. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I want to know how to do it. If someone knows how to do it, please reach out and show me. I feel like I feel like that old mum that everyone laughs because she can't set the video recorder. That's me right now. <laughs> the, the timer. Or the, the, yeah. <laughs> so so this week we're we're talking about how it's not all bad in business here uh, in the middle of this pandemic. And um, so yeah, so who who wants to to pick it up here? And, and help lead me this week. Well, <laughs> well I didn't uh, want to talk over anyone. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, we failed at that. Well, yeah, well, we did. That was an epic <laughs> fail. Sorry, Jen. Sorry, Joe. That's it's okay. All good. It's all good. Well, I, I came across this article that was talking about trends, business trends for 2020. But I and I, the reason I wanted to read it. it was because it was uh an article written in december of 2019 i thought oh i'm really curious what trends they predicted and how they align now um in light of the coronavirus pandemic 
And I figured they would be way off. The world's a whole different place. The earth is tilted on its axis. We're in a strange new world. But I was actually relieved and quite happy to see that some of these trends that were all, that were in play before Corona um, actually play really well in this pandemic climate. And then I found an article, a Harvard Business School article, where they had some, you know, Harvard Business School scholars um, make some predictions of how the future of business is going to be impacted. And I was, again, pleasantly surprised because not all of the changes are bad. And um, what we're going to talk about them, but many of them end up being better for the environment, better workplace environments for employees, better customer service. Um, so there, there are so many things that are actually benefiting consumers and employees that were prompted by the pandemic. And I thought, okay, it's hard to find good news these days. I'm gonna, I'm gonna latch onto this. So mm. Mm. that's what's that's what prompted this this conversation that we're having today. I think I think what's really important to note here, because when you said it was written in December, Jen, I thought, oh, this is going to be way off. I yeah, thought the same thing, right. way off. But then at the same time, I thought, hang on a minute, the foundations of business are the same, whether we're in a pandemic or whether we're not. It's actually the foundations we're talking about. Um, and obviously, um, because we're all stuck in our homes online, rates fairly highly in this and i think that ra i think that rather than it being different what it's done is just escalate that or speed it up i guess a little bit more yeah I, I, yeah i definitely agree we this pandemic has put a speed button button on a lot of things like we mm -hmm. haven't you know things are just happening at breakneck speed so one of the things uh pre-pandemic uh predictions had to do with this um trend towards consumers wanting to do business with socially responsible and environmentally responsible businesses. And there's a, a Gallup poll that uh, talks primarily about millennials um, who are sort of driving this. They were driving this trend. Um, they spend, uh, they're worth about a trillion dollars in consumer spending. And 73% of millennials say they spend more for sustainable products. So this was mm. something in play. And it might not on the surface seem to necessarily relate um, or have any connection to the current climate we're in. But if you think about it, I think we've all been very cognizant of the fact that we uh, we are being much kinder to the planet by default by staying mm. home. Um, there's there's a lot less traffic. There's a lot less pollution. Um, we've seen lots of reports from environmentalists and environmental sites about um, wildlife that is is thriving. Um, the climate. and turning up in cities and turning up yeah, and taking over yeah. towns. I mean, I want yeah. to I want a goat to take over my town. I, I'm <laughs> I'm all for that. Take it over, goat man. Um, but yeah, so this is, so I think this is just sort of um, fueling that trend, supporting that trend. I think businesses who are um, socially and environmentally responsible are going to be more successful than those that are not. Mm. I think that definitely the millennials, you know, I mean, this is my daughter's age and her friends, they very much talk about doing things that make them feel good or things that are good for the planet. And they will not take as much pay to make sure that that's happening. They've got a very different mindset to, I guess, and I know you're a bit younger, Joe. <laughs> so yeah, I'll talk about yeah, me yeah. being a Gen X. So yeah. I'm not going to put you in the, in the, sorry, the girls are, yep, uh, well, Gen X. You know, I'm, and, I'm and somewhere we between in between those yeah, two. but you know, we we grew up and um, in this sort of cutthroat, um, you know, corporate world where you worked lots of hours and you know you did what your boss told you, and it's just it's not like that for millennials, uh, and and they won't take that if it doesn't feel good for them, and I think that that is actually a good thing. Oh, I love millennials. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, they are 
um, instigating more corporate responsibility. I mean, they, they want more meaning in their work. They job mm -hmm. hop like crazy because mm -hmm. they don't, they can't commit themselves to a company that doesn't align with their values. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We should, we should actually demand it from our companies to have values in, in their, um, while they conduct business. I mean, why, why not? You can be profitable and not kill the environment. You can be profitable and treat your employees well, um, and pay them well. I mean, you can. I think it'll happen by default though. Don't you think? Because as the, these people, this, this, um, sector has got a lot of money that's going back in the economy exactly. and they're the ones that are driving it. So I, you know, um, I can definitely see it being sped up. I'm putting and my wallet away. I'm going to let the millennials buy everything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you get mom over here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah. So I, I love that. I'm 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 okay with that. I don't see how um, the pandemic is going to slow that trend down. I think it's going to continue to fuel that trend. Um, speed it up. Just yeah. speed it up. Just come yeah. on. Let's go faster. Faster. Um, so one of the other ones was that customer reviews will be more important than ever. And again, I, you know, I think we all had to think about this a little, right? Like how, well, how is that, you know, related to, to post pandemic? And I was thinking that, you know, it's harder than ever, or it's going to be harder than ever for me. And I think other people to, to trust businesses, because now we're not just worried about, do they serve a good product or is the food good at the restaurant? Now we're worried about do they conduct, you know, themselves in a safe manner um, that doesn't spread disease? Are they, you know, they have safe practices. Do they, you know, do, do they do things that, that, you know, make me trust them before I mm, purchase from mm, them? So definitely. I think, yeah. I think we are, we are just going to be looking at those reviews more than ever. And we want to know those things. And I think we're going to see those things come up. I'm already seeing it in reviews. I'm already yeah. seeing people talking about cleanliness in restaurants and whether the servers were wearing, you know, masks when they came out to the, you know, grab and go area. Um, this is already becoming a common part of our lexicon. So yeah, how are you going to find that out unless you read reviews? I don't want to Absolutely. wait till I'm in the restaurant to find out that they they don't sanitize the tables. That's exactly um, right, and I well, think that. Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh no, go okay. for it, Joe. No, 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 I was going to say no, that. I no. think. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> no bell for that one. No, you go, no. please, Joe. <laughs> no, 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 please, please. Okay, I think that customer reviews, I've been looking at them more than ever because as uh, as we're sort of all locked down, there's less conversations. You're catching up with people less and you're relying on the reviews every time you purchase something because, you know, whether our business is doing well or whether it's not doing well, money's still tight and you want to make sure that you're spending it and it's going to get exactly what it is that you're looking for. There's um, yeah, a lot of a lot of value in reviews, especially for that trust piece. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, I was just gonna add to the. Uh, I know my sister got into an argument because of uh, she wrote a review about a local restaurant where all the people either weren't wearing their masks when she walked in to get like the pizza, or uh, the one or two people that had them didn't even have them over their nose. So she's like, so she was like losing her mind, and then the the person who owns it lost their mind on my sister, and it turned into an online battle. Uh, oh no! Uh, 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 yeah, like it was, it was, it was pretty ugly, apparently. So, um, yeah. So I I think that those you know reviews are uh, it's almost like as if you're getting a clean slate because it's life after, like how things are being handled now versus like how they were handled prior aside from maybe service in general um but you know once you get past once you start looking past that like everything is going to be like did they do the, the right things during the time in which they you know that this is a thing that's happening um which if it goes on for like a year and a half to two years even if we're not you know completely locked down for a year and a half two years like the, things are things are definitely different now um at least until we get the vac a vaccine and we move forward uh, mm. with our, you know, from well, That's a good so. point that you made, Joe. I hadn't thought oh, about it. You. Like in terms of like, nice. uh, well, with re restaurants in particular, I think they just tend to come to mind because they, they were so impacted by the pandemic. But um, 
Yeah, the, the the opportunity actually to sort of uh, revamp your reviews by by being the restaurant that is uh, the one that's paying the utmost attention to you know safe protocols as we you know slowly you know reopen um, or whatever that looks like whether it's grab and go I mean there you know you still have yeah. to have safety measures in place even if you're just doing takeout. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, our, there's our a bit of an opportunity restaurant there. did that. Yeah. They, they installed, like you walk through the door and then there's like another door there. And then yeah. that second door, they put in like a glass sliding kind of like a hand, like a little glass sliding door window kind of thing. So they could like hang your food right through the window. So you yeah. don't have to like actually come up to the person, uh, directly face to face. So yeah, that's it's, cool. It's, it's so things like that. that is Do cool. you guys automatically leave reviews? Like we're talking about this and we're talking about we check reviews, but what about the businesses that are doing all those cool things like the Chinese restaurant, the people that are doing the good things, do they need to ask for the reviews or do people just automatically get them? I think you're challenging us to do more. Well, you're challenging me to do more reviews. That's for sure. I, I am so behind on my reviews. I'll be honest. I, I I tend to go like review when I'm really, 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 really impressed. I or bet. if I'm really, really, really unimpressed. But it has to be pretty bad for me to wear, write a bad review. I, I think I've written like two bad reviews in like five years. Um, because, you know. I don't want to, you know, hurt anybody unnecessarily. But yeah, it's a good point because that is yeah. such a great, valuable, like great return on investment way that you can support small businesses, particularly now when, you know, small businesses need all the support they can get. That's a great point. I think, you know, businesses should remind customers that their reviews matter and that they appreciate them, but also monitor the reviews and make sure they're responding to them. So so the, mm. those that are writing yeah. them know that they're, they're appreciated. So, yeah, that's that's is, a great point, Sam. Well, I ask yeah. because it's an area I don't know much about, to be honest. So I don't know if we want to talk about it now or in another episode, but I wouldn't know where to ask, like, where do we want to collect our reviews, depending on the business. Mm, Does it matter where we episode. put the reviews? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it is a big discussion, and I think we should table that one because yes. if we're, if reviews are this important, we need to know how to collect them and where to tell people to go to, to leave their reviews. Okay. Yeah. Future oh. episode coming your way <laughs> on online reviews. I, I, put, in, I put in our note, uh, notes file. I, I mean, I have a story about a friend who like somebody didn't like their business. So they, they paid a service to leave like hundreds of negative reviews, like one star what? reviews. Yeah. And like multiple different, ser like Google and like, uh, oh, Yelp that's and stuff awful. Like that. Yeah. So it took a long time to get those reviews removed because, you know, these services don't care. And, uh, by the time they did the damage, you know, had been done. But in the meantime, he like, uh, groundswell tons of reviews. So once those reviews were removed, the, the fake ones that were clearly from India, like it's all Indian names. Yeah. Located, mm. Like, and he's a pressure washer guy. Poor in guy. South Jersey. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's awful. The only yeah, thing I'll so. say is that they actually do care about fake reviews, particularly like, you know, review only sites well, like Yelp. Yeah, they they'll remove them. But it they... took, but, but, you know, at what cost of weeks? It took yeah. them weeks. It so shouldn't much take so weeks. He was on the local news for it because, they, wow. they, you know, they did a whole news story around it because, like, in those weeks, like, he could be losing tons of customers. Oh, absolutely. Especially as a pressure washer that does the stuff in, like, you know, the, the sp spring, summer, and fall. Was so, it recently uh, or was it a while ago? This is probably about two years ago at this point. Okay. I asked because yeah. Yelp is really, um, you know, up their algorithm game. So mm. they they catch like those fake reviews pretty quickly. Mm. And, and they judge the quality of the review on so many factors, like the quality of the profile ranks in the review, the, the grammar, um, yeah, all sorts of things they, they check. So they're pretty good at spotting like, the outlier reviews that just don't fit. Um, I had to like do a lot of research on Yelp a while back. I got really fascinated by it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, but that's, yeah. I mean, I think well, that's, that's so why, good. Yeah, that's, that's good. It is good. It's really good. It doesn't, I'm sure it doesn't catch everything, but. No, no, but that's also just, that might, is that just Yelp, right? Because there's still Google reviews, Facebook reviews. Oh, I know, there's uh, so like, many. So there's, there's I mean, and if you, you know, I, I mean, I can't, well, maybe people, maybe they're getting, maybe they're better at it now as a whole, all of them yeah. collectively, but 
but at the time like it, it just took forever to get rid of them and people just look at star you know how often do each of you look at stars versus like actually reading the reviews oh actually i read the reviews like, i read i read the reviews, so I, I read the I reviews the but you can we're first. the researchers for the show right jen <laughs> <laughs> i've read all of our podcast reviews <laughs> It didn't take very long. <laughs> no, no, that, that was a very short, a very short-lived read. <laughs> we, need, we, need, we need some podcast reviews on uh, Apple iTunes mm -hmm. and uh, everywhere that you get your podcast. Yeah, yeah, Speaking absolutely. Of that, oh, that's what I have a grind my gears for later. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, make a note of that, Joe. This episode's way too positive. We need some gears ground around here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's go. Let's go on to the third. The third point. Um, yeah, I think this is one of Sam's favorites. This uh, is one of my favorites. <laughs> traditional businesses. I'm thinking they're probably talking about brick and mortar. Traditional businesses, brick and mortar businesses are learning to leverage e-commerce and online online sales. Mm. We love that, right? Well, we love that, that they're finally catching up because I've been saying this for the last 10 years. That's what <laughs> People are finally listening. So <laughs> I'm so glad all you traditional businesses are finally listening because I was predicting <laughs> I didn't predict a pandemic, but I did predict that you probably needed to get a little bit ahead of the online curve. So mm -hmm. I am glad that uh, that people are catching up. Yeah, well, I love the example that they gave. Again, this is from December 2019, way before the pandemic. And they're like, oh, restaurants are going to have to learn to package their, you know, salad dressings and sell them. And, and I was like, well, yeah, look at look at what's happening now. Restaurants are turning to um, selling pantries, like using their supply chain to um, supply their customers instead of entire like pre-cooked meals, giving them the ingredients so they can make those meals at home. So they're definitely pivoting to, to selling online and selling products related to the, that traditional business. So mm, mm. Cool. people, when they go out to eat, they love to eat the food that comes from that restaurant. Mm -hmm. I've got a, a friend who has a manufacturing company here in Australia and going back, I think it was 20 something years ago, her and her husband had a a small restaurant in the Blue Mountains, beautiful part of, of mm. Australia, uh, and they used to hand make these little flatbreads. They're kind of like a mm. cracker kind of thing. Mm. Put it's, cheese are you on Car and Karen. I think yeah, Karen. Karen. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember Car that. you did. You did meet Karen from Carajon Kitchen, and um, they used to uh, serve these flatbread, and then they people loved them. They used to package them up, and now they're a huge manufacturer here in Australia. We can get their flatbread like. At their lavosh in all supermarkets all across yeah. Australia. So that was like way before online, but it was, you know, they were really understanding that listen to the clients or listen to the customers. They'll tell you what they want. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Oh, what do we see, it used to seem kind of silly or almost like full of yourself to be like, our sauce is so great. We're going to put it in a bottle and only sell it within our store. Um, I, you know, I used to kind of feel the way about uh, uh, there's a pizza shop that well, we, I took you to that pizza shop, Sam. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty sure or we were going to get that pizza, but we, ate we so were much going the to get the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> so they actually have like play dough, like like a like fake dough that you can like toss up. It looks like a, you know, Frisbee uh, and like the, their own T-shirts and like their whole like, uh, you know, apparel Fine. line. Um, Fine. So yeah, smart. Which, which yeah, like, but it's to sell like the sauce and stuff like that, like so people can can make it. I mean, it just, uh, especially right now, it makes sense to to do uh, those types of things. That any like, especially if you're not going too far out of your way to do it. Right. Yeah. We're not we're not trying to suggest that like, oh, well, now I need to go find a co-packing plant at, at a time where people, you know, it's very difficult to do al almost anything and do all these things like just get some get order mason jars like you can do that on amazon right you can go you you can do that easily and and start you know print out labels and get get it rolling yeah because it doesn't mean that you're going to lose sales i think it's crazy that mcdonald's hasn't packaged up big mac sauce i think that i can't believe they don't sell that maybe their thinking is that i'll go to mcdonald's i'm not going to go to mcdonald's to eat but i would buy their big mac sauce mm. <laughs> so it, i i don't it know it would be so much it would be so good on a on a better burger <laughs> correct you know like i'm with you actual, on that like like a oh, like a patty I, right i love like, to put my french fries in it it's so good so oh good. yes mm. yes anyway <laughs> I, okay can i ask something at the risk of sounding really dumb 
No. Uh, I'm, probably, I'm probably the dumb one here. <laughs> Just, I'll oh, brace myself. Okay. <laughs> it's It's been decades since I've had a Big Mac. But oh, good for you. Thank you. Such an accomplishment. <laughs> um, <laughs> with how many stores there are, with how many restaurants there are on the planet, it is an accomplishment. Because like by accident, I've gone to McDonald's a handful of times in the last by accident know, two years. accident like what you just trapped into, into the door? building <laughs> you know sometimes it's two o'clock in the morning there ain't a whole lot of options you know uh, but i don't know 24 7 some of them so <laughs> my question is i assumed from my last memory of the big mac that the sauce you're referring to is just simply thousand island yes dressing. i knew you were in australia it. it's not it's not? Uh, it's no. Not, it's, not, it's not just Thousand Island dressing. I, I don't know because I haven't. I actually haven't had a Big Mac in America, so I don't know. But in Australia, there is nothing like it at all. Okay, come on. We've got some people watching. Is come on, people. On Let's weigh in on this. <laughs> is it a secret sauce or is it just Thousand Island dressing? Because I swear to God, it's just Thousand Island dressing. Um, I'm Definitely not Thousand Island too. dressing in, in Australia because I hate gonna, Thousand Island dressing. I'm not going to believe the internet is. on this. I'm only going to believe the people that are watching. I mean, oh, come on, people, help like me out here. Combination of a cup, mayonnaise, relish. That's mustard. the ingredients in a Thousand Island dressing. Oh, really? I had no idea. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to no, actually, no, I, I was going to table that we have a new segment that's Australian versus American. I'm going oh. to get some, and we didn't get to do it today because we were running a bit behind. I'm going to get some Big Mac sauce and some Thousand Island dressing and show you what they look like <gasps> in a jar, in a bowl, because they look nothing alike. Okay. So Ricardo says it's Thousand Island and ketchup, but ketchup is already on, is ketchup is it ketchup and Thousand Island put on the burger separately? Or are you saying Thousand Island dressing is mixed with ketchup and that is the special sauce? And 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 how, where do you get this information? Oh, now I'm really intrigued what your what your Big Mac sauce is. I've got a feeling it's not the same. <laughs> I got a feeling it's not the same. Hey, what's up, Rick? How you doing, man? <laughs> I don't uh, know. The things, yeah. the things that Sorry. we geek out about. So, oh my so, goodness! Hold on. Here, here you go. So here, here's. So Rick, once we, I, I remember Mixed I was getting. Uh, it was a Burger King. Or I think it was Burger King with uh, Rick. And he's like, the fountain. I think he said the fountain soda at Burger King was different than any like anywhere else because they they formulate it so that it tastes better with the burger in which they put in. Uh, it's definitely know. different. Okay, I'm yeah. an old. He's like, I was just about to say I'm an old Macca's chick. But that probably doesn't even mean anything to you either. There's American versus Australian thing. You said you said there's a Big Mac, Mac a chicken Big Mac. No, no. Oh, I said. Oh, I don't know what I said now. I just a don't know. Oh, ch checker. I don't know. I said. Right, anyway. I said Macca's. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are Maccas? They mini like sliders? Maccas is McDonald's. No, we don't call uh, it McDonald's here. We call uh, it Maccas. I'm gonna start calling it Maccas, even though I don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't it sound much better? We're going for Maccas. <laughs> Maccas, yeah. It does. <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, so Rick Googled it. I really want somebody with some inside knowledge, know. though, because it may be mixed with ketchup, but it doesn't necessarily. But they put ketchup on their. That's what I'm saying. Sure, like, don't they? why yeah. would they put it in the Thousand Island dressing if they put it on the burger? To all well, we yeah. it's patty, definitely it's not like that here. Lettuce, cheese, pickles, pickles onions, onions and sesame, sesame, sesame seed bun. bun. <laughs> okay, so there's no ketchup. So it's <laughs> to all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. And today, the business okay. geeks are sponsored yeah. by McDonald's. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe I remembered that jingle. I can't believe you remembered it either. Uh, I know it too. I, I do. Re it. I do remember I when I, I when I finished my first Big Mac all by myself as a child. It was a momentous occasion in my family. I got. Wow. I mean, I got claps. I got. I think I got more praise for finishing my Big Mac than I did for my straight A re report card. <laughs> Hashtag bad parenting. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I didn't even eat McDonald's till I was an adult. We were not allowed to eat McDonald's because it wasn't healthy. My parents were so good for us. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, oh, definitely. <laughs> oh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Well, I don't know the Spruce Eats. I don't know if it's reputable, but okay. I'll take it. I'll take that under advisement. Like more research is got to be done. Oh, and now we oh, have oh, a recipe. We've got the whole thing. 
Okay, this sounds like a home mesh recipe. I don't think McDonald's is making this. I think this is if you want to make it at home. What is Miracle Whip? <gasps> what are you serious? All right, I've I'm gonna never heard of Miracle Whip. <laughs> Uh, just the the condiment that kicks mayonnaise's ass. That's all it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm allowed to say ass. Well, you wait, Joe, you know Joe, know, like you, you're in, you're in charge of the menu next time I come over. So, Last time uh, yeah. he helped me out with a Philly cheesesteak. Now we've got like a whole new array <laughs> of goods that I need to try. <laughs> but wait, wasn't Miracle Whip does like created back in like World War Two or something as a as a type of grease for like the guns or something? Really? Or am I thinking of something else? I I think it. You was... eat that? You eat the grease from guns? Uh, I think. Well, it wasn't like a gun, <laughs> like a pew pew, but like a, like a <laughs> cannon, like a mortar type of. Oh, that thing. makes it I... so much better. I'm eating this from uh... a cannon instead of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know why they would go through all the trouble of like. There's like 20 ingredients here when you can just use Thousand Island dressing. It's the same oh. thing. <laughs> I and cannot well, believe she, how cheaper. far we've got off track. Sorry. It is so it's cheap. Wait, 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 to bring it back to business, it's cheaper for you to buy the ingredients and make it in bulk rather than pay somebody else to make thousand island dressing and put it on there. Plus, if I you're making so. it, if you're making it, then it's your special recipe. Well, and I need to make this real. and figure out whether it's the same thing. I need to do thousand that. Thousand island dressing is made with ketchup. I find that really hard to believe. No, I think he's saying that the it special is. sauce is made. Well, here it is. But wait a second. <laughs> but, but 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 ketchup has vinegar in it. Like that's. There's a lot to unpack wow, here. Wow. I'm not a cook. This is or, or this is like, like that, a whole so. episode all on itself. I I see that. All right. So, <laughs> uh, getting back on track uh, to. Uh, I'm so confused. Mobile marketing. And... We're up to mobile, <laughs> mobile marketing. Mar uh, mobile marketing. All right. Let's. Talk oh, about you mobile say marketing. mobile, don't you? I, mobile, I feel mobile. Mobile. Mo mobile. Yes. Now we say mobies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> oh my god i love you so much jen <laughs> yep oh, oh i've lost it you gotta take this one away <laughs> okay uh Joe, are you going to take this? <laughs> oh, you want me to take this? Okay, so mo mobile, mobile marketing. As far as like cell phone marketing to cell phones, or what are we? Oh, geez. yeah. I didn't get the yeah. notes. You guys didn't. You didn't I put it links. in the messenger. Uh, <laughs> so this is about marketing specifically to people who are on their mobile, okay. on their phone, on their on cell their phone. Mobile. On, on their mobile. Mobile. A movie. So yeah, are we, absolutely. Are we talking about like the Bluetooth like uh, beacons that they have? And so this and is around or... geo targeting. It's yeah. around using apps. It's around oh, okay. tapping into SMX or test messaging. Um, mobile. Um, I feel really weird saying mobile now. Mobile Moby. payments. <laughs> Moby payments. Moby payments. Moby payments. It's, yeah. So it's it's around leveraging people's cell phone because that's obviously what they're on now. 100% people are on their phone more, like even if you're on Netflix, I don't know about you guys, I'm st I'm shocking, I'm still scrolling on my phone mm -hmm. while I'm watching, I'm not 100% into the show, um, but I think maybe it's not as big as what they're expecting because we're not heading out so much. But that's, I don't actually, this is not a fact, by the way, this is just my thought that maybe it's not to the level that they thought it would mm -hmm. be. I'm seeing so. more um, on my Mobies. I'm seeing more like SMS and text messages from businesses, even during this time. Um, you know, sometimes it has to do with uh, virtual events that are happening. Sometimes it's, you know, notifications about a, you know, free delivery or a grab and go deal or a special that's happening right now. Um, you know, sales things that are that are happening. I actually kind of like the um, the SMS and text messaging to me, I'd much rather get that than an email because mm. I can I can quickly read it, quickly delete it. It's not junking up, you know, um, communicate my business communications. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, so I actually I actually like the Mobies. I like the Mobies a lot. Um, I think it's smart get people where I, they I are. I actually prefer I prefer to get a text message too because a I see it. 
So so yeah. my local restaurant yesterday sent me their deal for this week. I yeah. saw it straight away. I know they email it to me, but goodness, well, Joe's seen my inbox. Goodness knows where that email is. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone, gone forever. And Almost you- at 19,000 emails, Joe, and counting. <laughs> I'm and, getting, I'm getting and with, just thinking about it. I know, but but think about it, with geotargeting, you can get so specific. I I mean, mm. yes, we're not going out now, but you can still frequent restaurants on a takeout basis. You know, there are drive throughs at Starbucks that are open. Um, there are some stores, you know, that are, you know, essential, you know, businesses like Target and Walmart that are open um, by using the, the Mobis, they can geotarget and they'll know like when you're within, you know, range of their businesses and can send you something to incentivize your visit. Like, mm-hmm. hey, notice you're drawing. We're not stalking you or anything, but notice you're on the same block as our store. If you come in now, you'll get ten dollars off. Um, you know, so Actually, that's I just think about that. It probably there you go. You, I think you've changed my mind. I think it's probably more relevant right now. Mm-hmm. Am I the only one that's concerned more about privacy than getting $10 there off? There is no You're privacy. You're on Facebook. You're live streaming Whoa. as if there's any privacy. Hold Come on. on. You live streamed with your children. Time, yes. Time oh. out. Time out. So... <laughs> Yeah, you're no, no. I I know. Obviously, we're we're live streaming, and and I live stream a lot, and I do live stream with my children, and and but that to me is controlled. So there's two things I worry about with my mobies, which is battery life. So like having them having people like check my location, not okay from two standpoints. One, a privacy, and but more even more of a concern is battery life. I don't want people just constantly checking my where I'm at, where my phone. Well, is. you it's can turn so you can turn it off you on can your turn phone. It off. Well, I know. I obviously I do. That's why I'm I'm so I'm so curious. <laughs> Thank as to you, like Rick. Why yes. why you feel that uh, online privacy is better, Rick? I know that obviously. Like it doesn't make like, Joe happy, but he knows. No, it. no, he'll no, give you the time out. A, but from a battery standpoint, like it, it, it you know. It, okay, time like, out. Time out on the battery standpoint. <laughs> this is what we're okay. doing now. <laughs> I, I am never. I am never more than a few feet away from a charger. I mean, are you just letting, what, what is going on? Are you not charging your phone on a regular basis? It's are you not in front of me right now. <laughs> I mean, I've never had this problem of just like- it's at 99%. I'm 99%. never stressed out about my battery life though. I'm a, I'm, I'm a responsible charger. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know. Must be a I Gen just, X thing. Maybe it's a Gen X thing. Yeah, maybe yeah. I don't. I don't know. I I just maybe you need I, a bigger I battery. Really, I don't want the ads coming at me. Uh, any opportunity? I mean, I have like most of the GPS functionalities turned off for pretty much every app. Like I have a, a what was it? Um, a Sleep Sounds app, and it's like, hey, we want to know where your location is. I was like, get the heck out of here! You don't need to know where my location <laughs> is. Actually, I am. Wi- okay, I will give you this, Joe. I agree with you with the location, and even if I'm posting on Instagram, I will post if I'm at a place after I've left it. Yes, I do do that. I, do, I never post so, like so I'm, where I I'm am. actually with you on that. So right. Joe. So so you know, I, I, I just I don't know. I maybe I maybe I'm just odd in the sense of I'm just like I don't need them to be like, hey, here's ten dollars off. Like I'm gonna oh, but they call it war driving or something like that, where you drive around <laughs> looking for people's open Wi-Fi connections. Oh, uh, oh. So so like in, in that in that case, I'm driving around looking for for companies to text me their deals. So I can well, jump I, in. I completely respect oh, where you're coming I have from. A whole drawer of USB bat- portable batteries, please. Like, I hope I, so. Oh, I absolutely do. I respect where you're coming from, Joe. I will say that these are businesses I've opted into in some way like they're not just random businesses they're well, you know yeah, i'm on their yeah. email list or you like, know i have their app in either yeah um, <laughs> and, I, and i also don't think that jen and i are saying we're going to market at you joe we're saying that we think that restaurants should tap into moby marketing Mobies. people that are willing to do it no no i <laughs> i hear you and i and i you know obviously well there are the ftc guidelines they can't do it unless you opt in like it's right it's against the law so we mm. we do have some protections and you do have settings on your phone that can protect mm-hmm. you um mm-hmm. so and i know most of my apps are set for um to only do the the location thing uh when i'm actively using the app yeah i'm the same okay yeah Oh my gosh. Oh, we all agreed on that. 
It's yeah, 43 right and a half minutes in and we all agreed on something. <laughs> we, we worked hard. For that, Joe. <laughs> we worked hard. And, oh, wait, did we also agree that we're calling mo- mobile devices Mobies now? Oh, yes. totally. Um, I like uh, it. Uh, ding, yeah. ding, ding, yeah. ding, yeah. ding, yeah. ding, 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 Yeah. Love my Mobies. Yeah. Love my Mobies. <laughs> all right. We're... We're wrapping. I don't wait, think we're wait, gonna wait, go wait. to the second article, but this is no, cool. no, no. Let's head into the number five and wrap this up. I think. <laughs> Come on, people. Oh, so, number five. So, really um, yeah. So the 2019 prediction, business trend prediction, was stories and live streams will dominate social media. Well, they got that. That they hit that nail right on. They the hit head. that nail on the head, and. That the app that is the happiest social media platform that COVID embraced the world would have to be TikTok. Mm. Oh, TikTok. I'm still TikTok trying. TikTok has trying. absolutely blown up because everyone's at home. Seriously, Jen, TikTok is like the black hole of social media. You can go down yeah. there for hours I at can a time. Watch, I can watch for hours, but oh I tried goodness. to make it's a TikTok. So good. I feel like you need to be like a, an, a film director. Like I need to, uh-huh. <laughs> to make like a five second TikTok. There's, I have no, I'm in there and I'm like, I'm making decisions that I don't know how they impact my content. Yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just not smart enough to create a TikTok, but I am. I admire the people that are doing it and doing it so well. Oh they're goodness, cinematographers. So Absolutely. And they're all so gorgeous too. I'm like, oh, my goodness, I can't be here. I'll just watch all you beautiful Oh, people. yeah, not only am I too stupid for TikTok, I'm not, yeah, I'm I'm not, not pretty, pretty, enough for, I'm pretty enough for TikTok. you got to be like a solid nine and above. Absolutely. On a good day, I'm hanging at like a five to six. And that's on a good day. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but the fact that I can't even fit into my pre-pandemic clothing, like, it's just terrible. <laughs> I'm at a survivalist weight. That's what I call it. <laughs> survivalist weight. Oh. So, so it's like getting a running start on uh, starving. Is that? that yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. If, if you get sick and you start, you know, I start to waste away. I'm like, Oh, weeks, I, maybe months away from that. I was going to say, I reckon right now I'll be the last one on the planet. So there's a, a positive. <laughs> <laughs> there is a positive. You know what? I'm, it's body positivity. I, you know, every every shape is good. Every shape Absolutely. is good. If Absolutely. you come out of this pandemic oh, with just some some weight gain, you know, there's no no shame in that. So many guys have been yeah. saying, Sam, I've lost so much weight since the pandemic. And I'm like, oh, that's so cute. Ha, ha, ha. And then I feel like punching you in the face. I know. <laughs> a friend of mine was like, I don't know what it is about the pandemic, but I only want to eat fruit and yogurt. Like, <gasps> Who is that? Fruit is yogurt. that a thing? I was like, the what? pandemic makes you eat fruit and yogurt? I was like, I want to eat cake and uh, like every mashed potatoes. That's all I want to eat, cake and mashed oh potatoes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, think, I think that I've just proven what my diet's like. <laughs> <laughs> in one episode <laughs> oh my god oh wow stop me now stop me now okay all right so well, I, 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 can i say i've been eating a little a little bit healthier because i'm not eating out every day at lunch five days a week. yeah yeah so wow. like, I'm, not, yeah, yeah, I'm not doing good. that aspect of it so for me it's been good that and doing things like drywalling and like that's a workout right there oh god, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say I've like lost a bunch of weight, but I'm not stepping on scale anytime soon to find out. So, we're just but that's good. <laughs> well, well done, Joe. See, I don't Very eat lunch good. out, so um, mm. I'm not eating. I'm eating out less too. There's, there's, mm. yeah. My my local's not open. It's very depressing, but uh-huh. it will be You're, soon. What's what's local? Oh my goodness! So we need to have this segment. Like, no, no, no. Our yeah, local so, bar. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, the local. Okay. The local. That's a, that's a, it's an Australian thing. I think it's an English thing as well. So you're always going to head to the local and on Friday night. See, I can teach you things, guys. I'm I can learning. Teach you things. <laughs> My head is about to explode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Well, I think we did enough. Like those trends from 2019, predicted trends for 2020. Not so different from what's going on no. right now. At well, wait, all. Let, let, wait no. let's bring it to 2021 because we're already halfway through 2020. Are you making thank predictions? God, thank, thank God we're almost halfway through this this crazy storm called 2020. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to make a prediction, Joe? 
that um I th- I think that there will be a I I think in 2021 there will be a rise in in more businesses created and partly because so yep. many businesses closed that like there are going to be new businesses to fill the gap uh mm-hmm. but I you know I yeah I think I think it's going to to be I think it's going to be great and I think right now uh, you know, anybody who had a dream about starting a business and you got furloughed or you got like kicked out uh, of the working class, uh, work, you know, workforce like this is this is the time to do it, especially because you're mm. getting unemployment, you're getting an extra 600 bucks in your pocket. Like if, you, if you're in a in a stable situation outside of working, like this is the time to go and, and start that business and figure oh, it out. I could not agree more. It is the perfect time. And I think it's also a time because we have slowed down in other ways mm-hmm. that people are really looking and saying, am I happy? Do I really want to be doing this? What yeah. is it that I really want my life to look like? Because we have had the chance, you know, like as life goes on, it's like you sometimes you know you're not happy, but it's like you just keep pedaling. And now all of a sudden it's like, hang on a minute, stop. Oh, perfect time. And thing, I don't know what it's like over there in America at the moment, but things are starting to open up in Australia again. And what I've actually seen happening over the last week is a whole new level of anxiety with people that had sort of like been not necessarily laid off their jobs, but told you don't have work at the minute, you know, and after the first week of panic of what am I going to do, it's like, actually, you know what, I didn't really like my job anyway. And they started to explore what they want to do. Mm-hmm. They've been called back into work and they're like, I don't want to be here. And I think that it's going to really speed up. I think we're going to have a lot of people in Australia leaving jobs in the next month and, and there's going to be all sorts of crazy movement, people starting their businesses. And I couldn't agree more, Joe. brilliant time to start your business. That's if good. you want to do it, do it now. You know, I agree. I mean, I always, I always think it's a good time to start a business. But yeah, for all those reasons you just, you just listed, and I think a lot of us have had time to reflect and think. And I think there's a lot of editing going on in our lives. We're editing out mm. the stuff that is meaningless to us and does not make us happy. Part of it's because we were forced to, like you said, we've lost that yucky job or whatever, um, and then we realize we don't miss it. So hey, let's mm. do something we actually okay. enjoy doing. Mm. Um, yeah, I. Th- you know, you know, there are, there are horrible things that have happened because of the pandemic. I mean, wretched, horrible, sad. Yeah. Sad really sad stories. But, you know, it, it's nice to kind of reflect on some of the things that happened that are on the more positive end. Mm, absolutely. Like this episode. Like this episode. <laughs> the craziest so, episode we've done. Uh, yeah. No, well, this is, this is how it should be. My seat is like falling. It's like fall. I keep getting like. <laughs> Whoop, we've lost Joe. There we go. All right. So uh yeah, no, like like but this is this is how it's supposed to be, right? This is this is why we are different than every other business show out there. Hundred uh, percent. And why you should totally be watching and or listening every single week, Monday <laughs> Monday at eight PM Eastern Daylight Time or Tuesday at ten AM Australian Eastern Time. Perfect. So, which I well, it's not perfect. I just realized that the scrolling text below says uh, that it doesn't actually say Tuesday on it. So I'm going to fix that uh, uh, right after I, I toss it over to our hot or not topic this week, uh, which is all about something that we talked about a, a few weeks ago on the show, uh, which is uh, cardboard cutouts and having them in restaurants to make people feel less awkward about the fact that there's. 10% or 25% of the restaurant in the restaurant. Absolutely. Uh, so this is something that Jen originally brought up about cardboard cutouts. So we all thought it was really cute. And then our on Friday in Sydney, in Australia, our restaurants were able to open up, but only with 10 people inside. Now, it can be a little weird with only 10 people in a restaurant. Hmm. So this restaurant owner put cardboard cutouts at the table in an attempt to make diners feel more comfortable. I don't know that you'd feel more comfortable sitting with cardboard cutouts, but I think it's funny. I think you could have a lot of fun with them. Like they could be, I don't know. I I feel like comedy could be had here. I don't, I think it would just take, I think it'd be fine. I think it would just take a little getting used to. 
I think that it's more about rather than just rather than doing it to make people feel more comfortable because it's let's face it it's not going to I think it's more calling out the elephant in the room that it's weird because the seats are empty so it's I think it's more you know um making a joke out of it yeah, I, I mean, I think it'd be cute if they had like celebrity cutouts. Like, <laughs> I mean, that would be fun. Absolutely. <laughs> See, I would be, I, I'm more uh, a fan of the idea of just get rid of the tables and have less tables and structure your space to function with. Less oh, interesting. Tables. Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah, to me, like, this is, this is just A, creepy, and B, it's already going to be weird being in a restaurant because uh, when you look at those pictures of the, like, the diagrams of, People mm-hmm. that ate in a restaurant and got COVID. There's oh, yeah. nothing comfortable about eating in a restaurant right now. Or for, for, to me, if you have a person that's, um, you know, highly impact, impact or able to be highly impacted by the virus, uh, mm. there's zero that's going to become make it comfortable. So to me, mm. I, I'd rather just see less tables, less chairs no creepy mannequins Uh, (laughs) i'm thinking i don't know joe well i I see what you're saying about the restaurants but i'm thinking i need some mannequins in my house (laughs) so i can simulate having (laughs) friends again and maybe a little party a board game night i don't know a wine and cheese um you know put them up in front of the window so the neighbors think i'm breaking all social distancing norms there are <laughs> oh my neighbors are are doing that like i constantly. could dance <laughs> dance with the mannequins around the living room uh, i don't know right, there, there is fun uh, to be had here there is fun to be had. <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> uh I just thought it was funny that we were talking about it a few episodes ago and then and then we saw it and i was like oh i, th- I think it's a, it's a good thing that's an expensive proposition too. Like when we looked at the prices of like the you know the carb we're getting carb cut out, what like one hundred and fifty bucks? Yeah, but a hundred. Can, can I can I give you a different take on that, Joe? Okay, go ahead, please. As a marketing ploy, you look up the restaurant with the cardboard cutout in Sydney, and they are all over the first three pages of Google. So I think it's actually the smartest marketing thing I've ever seen. I've never heard of Five Doc Dining before this. Now I know who Five Doc Dining is. Hmm. They certainly, yeah, okay. they certainly I mean, were so innovative. Mm. Yeah, I, I look, I, I get that, and I and I agree that you know there's no such thing as bad press. Um, I but I also agree, like in, to myself, I agree to myself that uh, I'd rather see less tables and it be more set up differently than than leaving all the tables and just having them mm. uh, cardboard cutouts, but. But yeah, I, I, you know, it's like um, a friend, a friend of mine on Facebook was a, it was a Casey Green, I think it was. He, uh, he wanted to sell a house, so he put a, a guy in a dinosaur, like the dinosaur costume, like the blow up dinosaur <laughs> costume, like mowing the lawn, opening the fridge, and put all his pictures to sell the, on the realtor site. And, no. and and not only did he sell the house, but he it made like a ridiculous amount of newspapers, uh, wow. all over the world. Cute. So like, yes, I agree. But I, I also think that there isn't anything particularly standoutish about this. But they, you're right. Their name did get did get there and all. Mm. Um, but somebody's going to one up them. Someone's going to find a way to make it even cooler than than just uh, you know a couple. Of, of course, people. and that's the fun of it, right? Yes. See, yeah, I like seeing Absolutely. how these how these restaurants are adapting. That's part of Absolutely. part of the fun, seeing their ingenuity. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, seriously, I don't think yeah. any of us would not send a big, you know, load of love out to anyone that's in the hospitality industry like right now. Like that industry is hurting. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. Absolutely. Much um, less awesome. restaurants out there. All so right, something's got to – yeah, let's get to this grind my gears. Grind, grind, uh, grind away. So on the radio, they they because I listen to the local sports radio uh, here, and on the radio they've been running the you know, radio.com ads uh, for these podcasts. And there's one like with this – I don't know. It's like she's like a doctor, and she's like talking all like, yeah, so I'm just telling my story about being on the front lines. And it sounds just kind of like – almost like she's acting like that's like her, the way her voice is. So it's like, she's intentionally trying to be like, these are my, you know, doctor logs. And, uh, but the thing that that does not what grind my gears, what grind my gears is at the end, she says something to the effect of, um, you know, you can get it on the radio.com app. 
or wherever you get your podcasts. And the and the, to me that just doesn't sound very um how about like how about anywhere you get your podcast or like all like all the places that get, you know you know what I mean like there's all the wherever you get your podcast. Like that just sounds so dead fish. I don't know. Is it is it just me? Maybe I'm so me. lost right now. I'm I, I'm I think I've I'm missing the story. You, I'm missing it. I'm I've heard that I've heard it said that way before, like, you know, on here or wherever you get your podcasts, because there's so many ways that you could be consuming just, a podcast. I don't yeah, no, no. I, it's just the wherever you get your podcast, just like or wherever. Wherever. Okay. So or what wherever. you're talking about instead of something like or your preferred podcast app. Are you talking about Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, like okay. how she not even Ah, how so she it's said like it, rather than like, no, whatever. It's yeah, more like, like this. I got it. Yep, that's that's what I'm getting to. It's just Okay, like, my train has arrived at the station, Joe. Woo! Yay. <laughs> I mean, we're, uh, we're all on edge. Things get on our nerves really easily these days. Yeah. Well, I hear the same commercials like over, because, you know, over and over and over again. Just like the Dell Pod, for instance. You know, the small businesses are struggling and looking for resources. So we created the first ever virtual uh, conference for, for small business owners, the Pod, France. We brought podcasters together. <laughs> <laughs> so, so original like, hasn't been happening uh, for years. because we haven't oh, been doing that for for a long time. I know it's, it's, it, was, it was so original. It was the first uh, first ever first ever you know vir virtual. Uh, oh, I love so, so, and oh. theirs is a month long. It's all month long throughout the month. Oh, wow, yeah. But I think it's really literally like just like not to say just, but they're they're podcast episodes. So it's like they set up a feed and they popped in all the podcast episodes and call it a conference and. They trademarked it. Well, hopefully someone gets some value from it. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. I hope so too. All right. So uh any any one cool thing this week? I don't see anything in the no. notes. But, oh, uh, I uh, yeah, no. Yeah, right. no, okay. No, no. I, I think that we ran out of time anyway, because we spent yes, a lot yeah. of time talking about Big Mac sauce. I'm not being exposed to enough new things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, My world is well. Small. You know, <laughs> next week we're going to start. I'm going to start exposing you guys to the Australian language, which is completely different to what you think it is. You think we all speak the same language? Uh, uh we do not. <laughs> Are we going to get our own like pocket dictionary? Absolutely. I mean, a pocket dicky. <laughs> <laughs> or is it a po dicky? <laughs> po <-dicky? laughs> Jen's on fire. I feel like I could. I'm just going to pick up this language. Like, <laughs> like a second skin you are just going to be talking all the aussie slang before you know it <laughs> i hope so i can only oh. get something out of this quarantine some other news some new <laughs> all right guys uh, this all has right. been great so, it's been real it's been a long day but this is a great punctuation to the end of it yeah as thanks god as it always as is uh if you've enjoyed this episode of the business geeks podcast share it with the business geek in your life uh, send us your questions and suggestions to questions at businessgeekspodcast.com. You catch us next Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and uh, or Tuesday, 10 a.m. Australian Eastern Time if you're watching down under in that place that doesn't exist apparently. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, hope you and all and you all your family are staying safe during this time. Uh, and if you are going out into places like Ocean City, New Jersey, stay Keep your distance from people, please. Wear a mask. For all of no our, yeah. Wear a mask. And, Wear a mask. Uh, and... <laughs> pro mask over here. I, I am. I definitely pro mask. All right, everybody. Have a great week.